Good morning, caregivers. It is Wednesday morning. It's time for you to get your you-know-what's in gear. I got up early this morning. I thought, yay, I'll get several things done before I normally am even out of bed. And next thing I knew, I was running late to do my 745 announcement with you guys. It just flew by. But I'm glad that you are here to join me for, to learn a little bit about dementia and dementia caregiving. I would like to thank our sponsors, HD Imports, located on Flint Street Extension in Rock Hill, South Carolina. You can reach them at 803-985-0985. They have got the best phone number, don't you think? Um, they are the mechanic of choice for the household, and they should be for you. They can repair and maintain your Honda, your Kia, your Acura, your Toyota, and your Hyundai. I didn't get all those names out as quickly as I did yesterday. <laughs> a lot to remember. Life in the Carolina is also a wonderful sponsor for our show. They have an uh, Emmy, uh, Emmy non nominated award winning television show about what it's like to live in the Carolinas. It's a great show. Check them out on YouTube at Life in the Carolinas and at www.lifeinthecarolinas.com and we thank them. And then last but certainly not least, Beth Crosby. Beth is an editor extraordinaire. You can find her at editor Beth com. She can help with all your writing needs, editing, coaching you through that writing process, and getting published. I've had the pleasure of working with Beth recently in the effort to refine and improve our marketing and our media. She's making a difference in my world. First, I thought she's a little bit crazy on some of her ideas, <laughs> but they are good ideas. So you can reach Beth out by email, beth at editorbeth.com. Well, I wanted to talk with you um, again today about some things that we can do to help prevent dementia in our world, and that's kind of important. I'll tell you the research that's going on in the scientific world is not really curing Alzheimer's, but it is more so preventing Alzheimer's. And that's why you'll hear there's a lot of research being done about vaccines. And I think we talked about that last week. Uh, different, there's a study going on in Ireland um, that uses one approach um, for a vaccine and a, and a study in New Mexico, I think, that's using a totally different approach for a vaccine. But anyway, you know, we don't have to cure what doesn't exist. So if we could prevent Alzheimer's, then how wonderful that would be. Seems far-fetched, doesn't it? But I remind you that at one time polio was a big problem, but now polio is preventable. Um, measles and mumps, rubella, all that stuff. So, you know, we just keep praying that these guys will be successful one day. So what can you do to help prevent dementia? And as we spoke yesterday and Monday, we had a few ideas there, and you can catch those shows on our website or on YouTube. But today I want to talk with you about how important it is to stay regular on your physicals and your blood work. Now, I know that if you're caregiving, thinking about go, running off to the doctor for yourself is like the last thing you want to do. You've probably been to the doctor with your loved one so much that you just, you know, your car can automatically go there. I understand that. And I understand you've probably got to get a caregiver to come in so that you can go to the doctor. But I will remind you of that statistic that tells us 40% of dementia caregivers pass away before their loved one with dementia. Now, why is that? Well, the number one reason I'm gonna tell you is stress. Oh my word, it is a stressful caregiving experience. But one of the other main reasons is we don't take care of ourselves as caregivers. And I can tell you, caregiving for me was a 13 year journey and I had paid help for mama. Mama lived in a community, but I still was very, very, probably overly involved in my mama's care. If you don't believe it, I could give you the names of some of the caregivers that were employed there. They don't really like me, but that's okay. I don't care because I knew the level of care I wanted for my mama. Finally found that level of care at the very end of her journey, but it is exhausting and you have to take time to go get yourself checked out. I think I mentioned to you in a previous episode how I've been checking my blood pressure in the morning. Now, my caregiving journey is over, but the emotions are so rampant in me. My emotions are like a roller coaster. Honey, one minute I'm thinking, I got it going on, and the next minute I crash and burn and I cry. I have cried more since my mama passed away May 31st, and I have cried my whole dang life. I hate to cry. So that would mean 
you know, I'm a little tense, my emotions are high, and that can have a very negative effect on me as an individual. So each morning, I've been checking my blood pressure. Hold on, let me show you. This is what I recommend. I did some studying about the best blood pressure cuff you guys can buy, and it's the one that I have here by Omron, O-M-R-O-N, and according to the research I did, it's one of the best ones that you can get in the screen there. It's one of the best ones that you can get for in-home checking, and it's automatic. You just press the button, and it pumps your arm up till you feel like your arm's gonna fall off. <laughs> I hate doing that. I think it hurts. And it'll give you a reading. And if you're in the normal range, which I know most of y'all ain't normal because I've met some of y'all. No, you know what I mean. If your blood pressure's in the normal range, the two numbers will show up green. If it's in an abnormal, it'll show up red. Or maybe one of them's normal and one of them's not. And it will indicate by green and red, which is pretty good for us folks who cannot seem to remember, just speaking for myself, what is normal in my blood pressure. So you've got to keep check on all these kinds of things. When you go to the doctor, they're gonna run some blood work, right? Well, at least once a year, you need to have that executive panel or whatever your doctor orders. We need to know what is your cholesterol? Is that normal for you and your family? Because cholesterol does vary by family. I'm just gonna tell you it does. So, but you need to know what does yours normally run? Are there things you can do to help get your cholesterol numbers down? What's your blood sugar? Do you know? Have you checked that? Uh, that's another thing that you can do at home. I don't have my little kit right here, but Michael and I, we check our sugar about once a month just to make sure everything's going good. If that sugar number looks a little off, then maybe for the next week, we're gonna check it regularly just to see, was it a fluke? Maybe you had cheesecake last night and it threw your numbers off, but you know where you stand with that. But you need to also have that done on a fasting blood sugar that they can draw the blood and, and find out and there's so many other numbers that will be measured, most of which I have no clue what they are and what they mean, but I know some of them will actually look for inflammation in the body. Back to that dang inflammation, right? Well, it's true. Let's see what time it is. My time flies by with you folks, and I set the timer, then I forget to look at it. <laughs> but we got to take care of ourselves. Um, so Let's Talk Dementia will be holding, holding our very first caregiver's retreat in October. Um, on October 5th, we'll be doing a day of pampering like you've never seen before for 10 overworked, underappreciated caregivers because we want to extend their life. We understand how important the work they're doing is and how hard it is. So we will be gathering these 10 folks for a day at a farmhouse in Clover. It's just gorgeous to pamper. If you want to nominate someone for that, if you want to nominate yourself, then you can do that. Email me, Carol, at Let's Talk Dementia, and I will send you a nomination form. Not going to guarantee you who will be chosen. There's a group of folks who will be looking over all of the nominees and finding 10 people who can attend, but boy, are they going to have a good time. Now, they do have to figure out how to get to Clover, South Carolina, and back home. I got no way to pay for that, <laughs> but just keep that in mind. But thinking about all that is why we have to take care of ourselves. Now, there's another thing you can do to help prevent dementia, stress, anxiety, and a whole host of diseases in your body that we don't often think about. It's got nothing to do with going to the doctor. It's called praising. You know, I, I saw a quote one time that said, worry doesn't prevent disaster. It prevents praise. It's very hard to praise when your brain is so caught up in worry and stress. If your brain is caught up in worry and stress, you're building anxiety and tension and agitation, and you're gonna get a headache, and your belly's gonna hurt. Kind of preaching to myself there. I remind you, I got an ulcer. Um, I've named my ulcer. It's got several names. So different people I blame my ulcer on. Just depends on the day of the week. <laughs> but instead of dwelling on what the negative is in your world, think about praising. Think about taking your morning, just this morning. You've not been up long. And think of three things for which you are thankful. Studies show us that if we write down 10 things we're thankful for each day, it is more beneficial than Prozac. Well, 
Prozac has some side effects. I don't know what they are, but it's medicine. Every medicine on the market has a side effect for somebody. But there is no side effect for sitting down and writing 10 things you're thankful for, except for good side effects. It makes you very aware. So in the world of Carol Howell and the daughters of Vera Jean Carpenter Holder, we had a very tragic event after Mama died. I'm not gonna go into the details, but in my life, I can list major things that have impacted my world negatively that when I think about either make me wanna cringe, throw up, or cry. In this event that happened, um, Mama died on Friday and this event happened on a Tuesday. I, I can't begin to tell you what it did to me. Oh, it, yeah, I'm, I'm truly just speechless and every time I would think about it, just blown away. Had the opportunity one day, on that day, one of my board members was on the phone and she said, um, how are you? And I said, I've just had probably one of the worst pieces of news I've had in a long time. She said, do you want to tell me about it? And I did, and I wasn't sure really why I was telling her, but I did. And she connected me with her brother-in-law in Kansas, who was having breakfast with an individual in Kansas, who was from South Carolina, who was the very person we needed to talk to, to potentially resolve this situation. Are you kidding me? When he told me this, he said, well, first of all, I'm going to have breakfast right now in a few minutes with Mr. So-and-so from South Carolina, and he's exactly who you need to help you with this problem. God works in amazing ways. You talk about praising. There's some serious praising went on from our house about that. Now, we had no idea if this gentleman was going to be able to help us with our problem. Would he be able to resolve it in a way that we were happy with? Or maybe it would be resolved in a way we weren't real happy with. We didn't know. But the peace that came from knowing we had somebody on our side, incredible, made us thankful. That's what I want for you. I want you to be thinking about the things that you're thankful for, recognizing them, that in the midst of all the junk you got going on, there, there's some amazing good things. Be thankful for them. But let me finish that little story. Yesterday, I heard from this gentleman who's been working on this situation, and it came to a positive ending for us. Oh, my word. I sat down then and realized that yesterday was going to go down in one of, as one of those days that changed my world. Literally, literally, it changed my world in a good way. More thankful than I begin to tell you. Slept better last night. My list of praises is higher today. You know what should be higher tomorrow and the next day and the next day? Being thankful. Well, I've preached to you enough this morning, but I do hope you learned something. I do. I want to thank our sponsors, Beth Crosby, Beth at EditorBeth.com, and her website is EditorBeth.com. She is a writing coach and a copywriter, proofer. You can check her out. She's amazing. Life in the Carolinas, where it's never a bad day for a good story, and you can reach them on YouTube or at LifeInTheCarolinas.com. HD Imports on Flint Street Extension. Reach them at 803-985-0985 to maintain your cars and repair them. We are going to miss them when we don't live in this wonderful part of the world again. But we have had everything done we can possibly do to our cars. And probably a few things we didn't need to do just because we wanted to do just while we were here. Well, I hope today's show has meant something to you. And I hope that when I say goodbye, you'll sit there a minute and make a list, start that list of 10 things you're thankful for. You're gonna feel better because you did. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for our sponsors. I'm thankful that as my daughter reminded me this week, and I'm gonna try real hard not to cry right now, when I called her yesterday, told her the good news, she texted me back and she shared with me a text that I gave her in 2011. She sent it back to me. And it said, God is God. God is good. And God always knows and does what's best for his children. Amen. Blessings and smiles. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.